What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to yet again another video. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a very brief trading update today, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that did very well today that I'm personally watching over these next couple of trading days. And I also wanted to tell you guys, if you want me to talk about any stocks or ETFs in Sunday's video, drop a comment down below right now at the end of the video whenever you guys want with a ticker symbol that you want me to talk about. So typically every Sunday I talk about 10 stocks that I'm watching for the upcoming week and some of those are ones that you actually called out, shouted out either on the comment section in Friday's video, which is this video you're watching, or in the call out section. So if you guys want to talk me to talk about any stocks drop a comment down below right now and if you enjoy this video feel free to hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and without further ado guys let's just hop right into it so the S&P 500 today almost hit the all-time highs guys we were almost there one dollar off we ended up closing at 2939.88 up thirteen dollars and 71 cents at the close up 0.47%. And we actually got some good news, really great news, I would say, about our first quarter GDP growth. It was at 3.2%, which absolutely blew away expectations. A lot of people didn't expect this, but the economy in the first quarter did very, very well. And I personally think this was a catalyst in the market's performance today. Just figured I'd mention that if you want to do more research on that, I advise you to do so. Go take a look, read some articles, look at some charts to see how the growth compared to previous quarters. And guys, I'm telling you, it's pretty good growth here. Pretty, pretty good growth in terms of GDP. That's just telling us the economy is doing better than expected, right? Which is some pretty good news for the overall stock market. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average here up $81.25 at the close, up 0.31% here. Pretty solid day in terms of the Dow. And the NASDAQ, pretty solid day as well, up $38.75, up 0.50%. So let's go back over here to the S&P 500. We'll break down some technicals very briefly to see what I'm personally seeing here and where I expect the markets to go. So over the past couple of videos, guys, if we hop here on the S&P 500, the five-day, five-minute chart, we've been talking about this little range that the S&P has been trading between, between 29.35 and about 29.15. It's that $20 little buffer range, the horizontal channel pretty much that we've been trading in. There was a stronger resistance at this level. We, we struggled to get out of it. I believe this was on Monday or Tuesday. The next day, again, we struggled. The next day, we struggled. But today, guys, we finally ended up popping out up to the 2940 level nearly, which is a very good sign that this was briefly or really a brief consolidation zone for the SPX before we're pushing up to another higher high for the continuation of the uptrend. So all in all, what I'm watching now, guys, is for us to potentially hit those all-time highs this upcoming week, which I personally think we're 95, 90, 95% um, in probability from my personal opinion that we are going to hit those all-time high simply because we're literally a dollar and three cents away from those highs so one literally one little brief green day one little brief pop up let's say monday we pop up a bit that's going to be an all-time high right so there's a very high probability unless we just tank right unless the market just tanks on monday that we are going to hit the all-time high so i'd just keep an eye honestly guys you know on the all-time high, right? Are we going to pop back up? And then from there, how is the market going to react, right? Are we going to continue to push up maybe to 29.50, 29.60 before we see another little plateau, before we see a potential retracement? That is what I am watching. Very, very basic here on the S&P 500. So going over to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we were talking about how 
It was trading between 26, 400, and 26, 800, really over these past couple of trading days. Yesterday, we ended up selling off, or the day before. Let me just double check. Yup, it was yesterday. We gapped down. We saw 3M, the company, ticker symbol MMM. They reported pretty bad earnings. The stock tanked a bit, about 13%. That brought down the Dow, in my personal opinion. We ended up dipping below that support at 26,400, but we ended up opening right at that level. We actually dipped down a little bit, retested that support today, and we bounced up, closing at about 26,540, putting us towards the middle of that channel that we're seeing here on the 184 hour chart, which is very good that we've bounced on that support level. We're looking to continue the uptrend here, and we're looking to test that resistance at 26,800. And let me just draw this little um, trend line for you all. And if we zoom in a bit, you can see it better. You know, this bounce here and the pop is the higher low that we need for the Dow Jones to continue the uptrend, right? The higher low at 26,400-ish, right, where we saw that bounce. The previous at about 26,100. The previous from that at about 25,000. Uh, 450. So the uptrend is intact on the Dow based on what I am seeing. And it's absolutely downpouring outside right now, guys. You probably can't hear that. Oh my God, it's downpouring outside right now. But uh, nonetheless, the NASDAQ today, um, it's in a very similar boat to the Dow Jones, right? We saw that little pullback from the all-time high at about 78, 79, down to this 50 simple moving average on the 184-hour chart. We ended up hitting that support level very nicely, and now it's looking like we're continuing the uptrend at a higher low from the previous, right? So this is very, very simple. You know, these technicals, you know, they're not too difficult to see and understand, right? We've seen the markets be in fun your places and when the technicals are looking like this again it's just very easy to decipher and very easy to um kind of predict where the market is going based off the data the data that we are seeing right so we'd simply pull back a little bit of a retracement right over the past day or two you know, we've seen retracements like that in the past, right? We pushed to a high here, pulled back, pushed to a high, pulled back, pushed to a high, pulled back. It's just part of the uptrend, right? Once a stock ETF index future, once it's going up, you know, consistently, there's always going to be healthy pullbacks. And that's just honestly what I'm seeing here in terms of the NASDAQ. So that's the overall market update today, guys. What you need to keep an eye on is just simply the S&P 500. Are we going to hit all time highs this upcoming week i personally think we are and that's pretty much it right let me know down below in the comment section what do you think about the overall markets right now what do you think about the spx are we going to hit the all-time highs i personally think we are i would love to see what you guys think about that so let's talk about what i ended up doing today in terms of my trading you saw in the title of today's video the stock that i'm personally swing trading my biggest swing trade position right now is Procter and Gamble guys ticker symbol PG and this is one that I was scaling in after they reported their earnings right and if we hop over here to Procter and Gamble this is one that's played out 100% beautifully to my plan, right? We can see the, the, the peak was at about 107.2, right? We pulled back on that earnings report. They beat on EPS. They beat on revenue, right? But their Gillette segment was lacking, right? One of their baby segments was lacking as well. But they're innovating in these two segments of the business, which in my opinion is going to stimulate growth. And the other growth in their mass massive, massive category of, uh, you know, products, businesses, segments, the growth in the other ones, right, other than Gillette and this one baby one, they've been pretty good, right? They've been pretty good. And the stock has rebounded here with a very strong day today of about $2.58, up 2.5%. I got in again on that day, they reported earnings. I, I forget what day it was exactly. So this is Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday is when they reported earnings, right? We went down all the way to $102.13, opened up nearly 5%. 
margin of profit, right? I ended up getting in right here at 103.80, ended up adding more towards the end of that day. And over the past couple of videos, I've been talking about how I want to add more into Procter & Gamble once we broke above $105. And that's exactly what I ended up doing today, guys, right? We saw the big gap up from 103.60 at the close all the way up to 105.73. We can see again a $2.58 move here. And I ended up adding more money money at literally $105. I had an order there to buy a couple of more shares, ended up doing that. And now I'm in with a pretty sizable, a pretty strong built position in Procter and Gamble. So I was talking about in the group chat, you know, how my limit order right now on Procter is at about 107.50, I believe, 107.50 or 108. I have to double check that, but that is where it currently is right now. But I'm thinking potentially here, guys, you know, especially with this GDP news that we got, you know, I think there's some more green upside in the markets now. You know, I personally might hold Procter & Gamble a bit longer than expected, right? Maybe maybe past 108, maybe past 109, maybe around 110, or not 110, 110. That is where I might end up holding Procter & Gamble as of right now. And obviously, you know, this is something still in the air. I was typically, um, I was originally rather looking to sell at 108. So to protect my profits, I'm using a pretty tight, um, you know, trailing stop right now. Not too, too tight. It's around 0.5%, I believe, just to protect the profits. But with Procter & Gamble being a quote unquote safer stock, right? It's a blue chip. It's one of those companies that you know, isn't too volatile, to be quite honest with you guys. I feel a bit more comfortable leaving a bit of wiggle room there in the trailing stop and holding it a bit longer as it does recover. And to be quite frank with you all, it seems like it's recovering very nicely, right? We ended up bouncing on the 180 SMA, which is what I was hoping for. We got that. We broke out of this 50 simple moving average resistance on the 184 hour chart. These are just very, very good signs for Procter and Gamble. So let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think about Procter and Gamble? I know a lot of you, or some of you rather, were talking to me about it either on private DM and the Discord that you're trading Procter and Gamble. And honestly, I think this is one of the best, in my opinion, right? Obviously, a lot of people's opinions vary out there. But in terms of swing trades, you know, in the market right now, this is one of my favorite ones. And don't just buy it based on my opinion, guys. You have to do your own research or due diligence, understand the risk, right? You have to understand these different things before buying it. And don't buy it simply because me, some person on YouTube is talking about it and buying the stock. That is not the way to go. You have to understand for yourself why you're buying, what's your plan, where you want to sell, where you want to add more, etc., etc. So that is the biggest swing trade that I'm in right now, Procter and Gamble. So what else am I in, right? Facebook's one that I'm in and ended up, uh, you know, losing a bit of money today, but I didn't lose money because I didn't sell, right? So I'm basically just down a bit. I was in Facebook from yesterday around the 193 level today was kind of a volatile day in Facebook stock we can see popped up to 192 sold off to 189 now we're, we're chilling at around 191.50 towards the end of the market so I'm still comfortable holding Facebook especially because of the positive earnings report that they did have so this is just one that I'm simply holding right I'm in with a smaller amount of my position right I'm in with about 20 percent of my goal position until we get a confirmation that we're pushing up into the mid 190s where I plan on adding more money so so Apple, guys, is another one that I ended up buying just a little bit here, guys, just a little bit. You may be asking yourself, Stas, why are you buying Apple when their earnings report is on the 30th, right? Don't you not buy stocks before earnings report? Well, this is simply a weekend swing trade for me, guys. I'm looking to... I bought a little bit of money here, or put a little bit of money rather, in Apple. I'm looking to swing it simply over the weekend with a plan of selling on Monday, right? This was kind of an off the whim decision. It might not work out for me, right? But I'm looking to capitalize a small gain here if Apple 
does well on Monday, right? And the goal is to sell before earnings, potentially hop back in after earnings. We'll see what I end up doing. I will let you guys know in the future video. But what I'm seeing in terms of Apple here is we've pulled back a sizable amount since 208 down to about $204. We're maintaining the 50 simple moving average here on the 184 hour chart, which is a pretty good sign that we want to reverse back up. And it's kind of uh, just a... Uh, you know, a play here where I'm looking to hop in on the dip. Hopefully we pop back up on Monday. That is the goal right now with Apple. Let me know in the comments if you are trading Apple. You know, this is a smaller position out of the three ones that I'm swinging right now, guys. Apple is definitely by far the smallest one due to their earnings. Maybe I'll lose money on this one. We'll see what ends up happening. But of course, the goal is to make money just like every single trade that I take. Does it always work out that way, guys? Absolutely not. I lose money. You probably have lost money. I, I guarantee you've lost money. And every trader out there, everybody investing their money long term, everybody that's swing trading, everybody that's day trading has lost money at some point in their lives. So very quickly, guys, I don't want to keep you all too long. And remember, drop a comment of some tickers you want me to talk about in Sunday's video. Let's just go rapid fire on some stocks that I'm personally watching. So obviously, Apple, I'm watching Apple next week. They're reporting their earnings. Facebook, I'm watching Facebook, of course. They reported earnings, very volatile. Looking for it to get back to the mid-190s, potentially $200 again, like it did on their earnings report day. AMD Advanced Micro Devices is another stock that's reporting earnings on the 30th unless they pushed it back. Yup, April 30th, 2019, the last day of April is when AMD is reporting their earnings. We're still trading in that horizontal channel pretty much here between $28-ish dollars and $27. Maybe we'll break out after their earnings report upward to the 29 level, $29.50, maybe $30. That's what I'm watching in terms of Advanced Micro Devices. Devices. We've seen a pretty sizable move in gold here, guys. We broke out of the 50 simple moving average resistance here. We popped out of there. Now we're looking to test this 180 SMA, which has been a resistance over the past couple of weeks here. So JNUG, as you can imagine, since gold did very well today, JNUG follows since it's an ETF that goes up whenever gold's going up. We had about a 10% move here in JNUG at the close of the market. But one thing I'm watching here in gold, guys, is is that simple moving average, the 180 SMA again. It's been a strong resistance here. We're seeing the bearish cross, not too good of a sign. But if we break out of that 180 SMA, if we start to truck back into the $1,300 level, this can be a sign where we could potentially be reversing to the upside in gold. But until we see that, I'm not personally going to be touching JNUG, but I definitely think it's worth taking or really just keeping an eye on right and let's say we get rejected here and we slowly start to continue the downtrend from a lower high reversal you know this can be an opportunity to hop into JDST which is the bear ETF that's going up whenever gold is going down so another one we saw tank today absolutely tank was crude oil guys so we went from 6670 ish all the way down to $62.80 at the close here. The lowest point on the day was around $62.28. And if we're just hopping over here, taking a look at some technicals, what are we noticing, guys? We're noticing a green bullish candlestick forming on top of the 180 SMA here on the 184-hour chart, where it's historically bounced over the past couple of months. So this could be a point in time where we are at a very big dip. This has been a correction that we've been waiting for on crude oil and UWT, which is an ETF we trade based on crude oil, which goes up whenever crude oil is going up. This one had a sizable pullback today, which could be a good opportunity now, especially if crude oil does end up popping up. And if you don't know which ETF I'm referring to, it's UWT here. We saw the 10% pullback. This is definitely one I'm watching this upcoming week. So I'm going to end off the video here, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like button again it really supports me and supports the channel in general if you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed yet 
What are you doing? Hit that red button. Subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate all of you guys out there watching and subscribing to the content. And hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. And I make videos pretty much every single day, especially throughout the week on trading, investing, and the stock market. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I hope you all enjoy your weekend. Don't forget to drop some tickers down below. Peace out, guys.